Hey everyone, I hope these facts about planets, Kuiper Belt, asteroids, whatever you need to know, just space in general, get you interested in astronomy class. But astronomy class in general, especially the one at Myrtle Beach High School, takes hard work, dedication, determination, math skills, and you need to be serious. So don't be like Pluto and get kicked out. And this is Mr. Mr. Mueller's, Mueller's astronomy, astronomy class. So, your project on Earth. Mm -hmm. It was really good. I really liked it. Thanks. Uh, is there anything I need to know about Earth that we might not know about, they um, might not know about? Well, it's the largest out of the terrestrial planets and also the most dense planet in the solar system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I know that the largest mountain is on elsewhere, on a different planet, mm -hmm. right? In the entire solar system? Yeah, in the entire system. But like, what, what is our largest mountain? Um, a lot of people think it's Mount Everest because, you know, that's what most people tell you, but it's actually Mauna Kea in Hawaii. If it's measured from base to summit, it's actually a lot taller than Mount Everest. So do you know anything about Earth that most people wouldn't know? Anything about the oceans, mountains, volcanoes? Well, well, this, this planet is basically the only planet that has oceans that are not frozen. And uh, unlike, this, unlike space, we've only, we've only explored 7% of it, which is pretty shameful for us. It's a shame. You know something else cool about Earth? Hey, I'm back. We in here. Something else cool about Earth? Uh, Earth is a volcanic planet, you know? And we still have active volcanoes going off today. I don't know if you know this, something crazy about Earth. I think, I think a couple people know, but you might not know. Hawaii is just a volcano that, like, rose out of the ocean, like, you know, exploded when you know, erupted out of the ocean. So, Hawaii is a volcano. Didn't know if you know that. Earth is a volcanic planet. I don't know if you guys also knew this. But Earth, in South America, we have rivers that are rainbow colored from the moss. It's pretty cool. Also in New Zealand, we have caves with bioluminescent worms. They glow. Do other planets have rainbow rivers? No, no they don't. That's crazy. Yeah, that's Earth pretty Earth is unique. really cool. Hey, so, you know, solar system family gatherings. Earth, life of the party. Thanks for watching. Hey, my name is Stefan. And I'm Abby. Stefan, I thought your project was pretty interesting. Why don't you tell us more about it? Yeah. My project is Mercury and it's mainly made up of rock, rock and metals. Its core is made up of iron and nickel. And if we ever want to go to Mercury, we would like to mine some of that iron off of it. And where is Mercury located? It's the first planet to the sun. It's about 58 million uh, kilometers away from the sun. Uh, what like personally interests you about Mercury? Like why do you uh, like it so much? I think I like it so much because like the core is made up of iron and we would really want to get some of it and because we don't actually know who discovered Mercury. And do you think humans would ever be able to go to Mercury or Yeah, I think so that in the future we would we would go to Mercury and probably mine it for the iron. Could we live on Mercury? Like, does it have an atmosphere? Um, the atmosphere is really thin, and I don't think that we can live on it, but we can go for a short period of time. And what about the temperature? Is the planet altogether just hot, or are there plant or places on the planet that we could go? Um, during the day, the planet is very hot because of the sun, and during the night, because it doesn't have an atmosphere, and the temperature does not keep, keep in the planet, uh, the temperature is very low. That's cool. And if humans ever did make it to Mercury, like, would we be safe? Is there any type of weather or volcanic activity that we would be There used to be a volcanic activity a billion of years ago, but not anymore because the, the, the planet is considered a dead planet. Awesome. <laughs> So why don't you tell us a little more about the day and year on Mercury? Mercury stays longer than its year. It takes about 88 days to go around the sun, and the day on Mercury will be 175 days on Earth. It's pretty cool. So it stays longer than its year. Yep. This has been Abby and Stefan. Thank you for watching. Hello, Jordan here. Just decided to drop in and give you a few facts about our solar system, the sun specifically. And I'm here with my good friend, Sophia. 
For starters, did you know the sun accounts for 99.86% of our solar system's mass? I did not. Want to elaborate? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. See, everything you can touch has mass, including the rest of the planets. And I find it very crazy how Jupiter doesn't even make up for 1% of the solar system's mass. It's crazy, right? That's pretty crazy. And even though that the sun may seem so big to us, it's just an average sized dwarf star, which makes it not as special as you think. Really? Really. Well, then. contrary to what others may think, it's really not a perfect sphere. It's close, but not exactly. That's cool. So this has been Sun Facts with Sophie and Jordan. I hope these sun facts have brightened your day. Hey everyone, it's Marco and Lily here. Uh, we're going to tell you some cool things about comets. Uh, hey, you, uh, you're you a comet expert. Sure, yeah. So, I've heard a couple things. Some people say that comets, or some people think that comets are just big balls of like fire or big balls of ice. What is your take on this? What is a comet? I mean, like, actually, it's kind of neither. Um, comets are mostly made of dust, but it's also made of like volatile like, ices too. So, yeah. Like, what? What do you? What is exactly a comet? Um, a comet is made of three parts. The first is the nucleus, which is like the center. What of What do you it. mean by like a nucleus in a cell? Like the, the tiniest part of it? I mean, yeah, kind of. Like it's the center of the comet. It's the mostly solid part. It's made of volatile ices like oxygen and carbon, carbon dioxide, and or organic matter and dust. It's about 10 to 15 kilometers on average. It's also the part that's the Earth. Are there any other parts of the comet? Well, yeah, actually, there are. There's the um, coma, oh, wait, yeah. which is a basically a debris cloud. And then they there's the tail. But did you know there's actually two tails? You got the one tail that when you look at a comet, you can see. You know, it's got a tail behind it. it goes. Uh, but that's the one. That's the tail made of dust. There's also a second tail made of plasma that you won't see. It goes, because you can't hear it, you can't see it, it's in space. Uh, so yeah, two tails. It's kind of yeah, crazy. Cool. It's weird because, I mean, you can you barely know the other tails there. It's just, it's plasma, so it's invisible to the naked eye. Uh, so what's a short-term comet? I've heard that word thrown around a little bit. Yeah, a, a short-term comet, it's like, um, a comet makes its orbit ever less than every 200,000 years. Oh, so would Halley's Comet fall under that like category? Yeah, actually it's the only short-term comet we could see from the naked eye. Uh, d nice. Uh, Do you know anything about Halley's Comet? <laughs> I, know, I know one thing, or I guess a few things. Halley's Comet it was first discovered around 200 BC by Chinese astronomers. Then, but why is it named Halley's Comet then? Well, because Edmund Halley uh, figured out that Halley's Comet comes around pretty often, every 75 years, approximately. And he's the one that, you know, figured that out, like, officially. So he coined it, wrote the term, whatever. So it's Halley's Comet because he figured out everything about it. So we can potentially see it twice in our lifetime. Yeah, you have to be really young when you saw it the first time, and you probably wouldn't comprehend what it was you were seeing. Uh, you'd have to learn about it later in life, probably from a video like this, uh, informative. Uh, yeah. But yeah, later on, you'd definitely be able to see it if you can live long enough. So I have a question about you, since you're about you, for you, because you're so smart about comets. Yeah, okay. Go, um, go for it. So, do meteor showers have anything to do with comets? Yeah, actually, if a comet gets too close to either the sun or especially Earth, and it gets into Earth's atmosphere, it'll start to break up. And since it's mostly debris, different debris will shoot across the sky, like a meteor shower. But luckily, most of the debris burns up before it can get to the ground, so we don't get like peppered constantly with different rocks and stuff. That's yeah. Cool. So comets, they're pretty awesome, pretty inf interesting. Uh, comets, more like call me. See you later. Hello, Melody here, and I'm Daniela from Mr. Mueller's astronomy class. Jupiter is a gas giant, and the title giant is very fitting. Did you know Jupiter was actually named after the Roman king of gods? Why yes, I did. And to fit its title, Jupiter can have lightning on the surface that can be up to a thousand times stronger than the lightning here on Earth. And did you know Jupiter has a giant red spot on its surface? Indeed, 
dead spot is actually a storm that has been going on for over 200 years. However, storms like these aren't even that special on gas giants. On that note of Jupiter being a gas giant, Jupiter is two and a half times larger than any other planet in our solar system combined. That's pretty massive. Another interesting fact, Jupiter is made of very dense clouds. Very, very dense clouds. So dense that we can't even get a probe through the top layer of surface clouds to see what the core is made of. So another interesting planet you might not have heard of at all, it's a dwarf planet. It's named Haumea. Uh, you know what, what's crazy about Haumea? It's the least spherical of all planets. It's like this. It's crazy. Like a stretched out egg. Like a stretched out egg. And that makes it really recognizable if you're looking at all the planets, dwarf planets. Mm. Uh, do you know, why is it like that? I have no idea. Because of uh, the rapid rotation, just... So it spins out and then it stretches itself out at the same time. Yeah. Uh, the rapid rotation, a day on Haumea is about four hours. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to be a well-rested human, you'd be sleeping through two days dude, just to get eight hours of sleep. It's kind of crazy. It's not very productive. Uh, what's it made of? What's it made of? Yeah. It's, most of it is ice. You mm -hmm. know, I don't think we know what the core of it is because we haven't had a whole lot of interest in it. In it. But there is one big spot on Haumea uh, it's just a giant red spot. It looks really weird when you see it on a planet. It's thought to be made of like higher concentration of minerals, carbon-rich compound stuff, which would make it stand out from the rest of the icy, ice-covered planet. You know? mm -hmm. uh, isn't it really far away? It is really far away. Uh, it's about a planet or two farther from Pluto. But if you have a good telescope on like a clear night, you would be able to see it. It's the third brightest Kuiper belt object. Speaking of the Kuiper belt, you mean what that? is it? So, the Kuiper belt is a vast region of space where a lot of stuff happened. What do you mean by that? What is that? What is that? What do you mean? <sighs> on a map, it seems like a Kuiper belt is just drawn as like an asteroid belt, right? It, it technically is an asteroid belt, but on a much larger scale. Say that, um, if you know what AU is, it's astronomical units. It's pretty far. It's from the center of the sun to the center of Earth, that is one AU. The, it's pretty far. Yeah, yeah, it really is. The Kuiper Belt is 30 AUs from the sun, and it reaches all the way to 50 AUs from the sun, meaning that it has a range of 20 AUs. If you actually do the math, it will add up to 5,024 AUs in area, in a discular area, meaning that it's really big. It can probably house some things that we've never seen before. So. It could have like planets inside of it that we just don't know about. Yeah. Dwarf planets, yeah. planets. But wouldn't they be all like beaten up by all the rocks floating around? Uh, yeah, they would actually. But Especially if they have a high gravity, right? Yeah, if they have a high gravity. That's why Haumea is haven't been uh, hit by much because it's really small and its gravity's uh, weak. Yeah. Haumea probably wouldn't be able to survive very many hits from rocks. Besides, since it has so much space, it really won't matter. And the asteroids are pretty far apart from each other. Even though they're like 100 kilometers, the smallest one there is, it won't really matter much. It will probably hit once or twice every year. So, it's like a giant, just, I mean, asteroid belt. I don't know, is that a good way to describe it? Uh, There's a lot of asteroids in it, right? Yeah, and also comets. That's where comets are thought to be coming from. Uh, are we in any danger from anything hitting us from the Kuiper Belt? It would take a long time for it to come here, so I don't think so. We'd probably be more worried about the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt. Oh, and another interesting thing about that, another reason we don't have to be worried, Jupiter uh, tends to take in asteroids that would be would hit us. The, Jupiter's gravity tends to pull it in. That's why it's known as the like mm. asteroid killer. Mm. So that's pretty interesting. Haumea and the Kuiper belt. Haumea and the Kuiper belt. There you go. Thanks for watching. We didn't plan it out this way. <laughs>